Well, if you ask me, Z-Blaze is a blaze. Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We are unboxing, indeed, the Z-Blaze Pro. We've looked at them all. Look, nothing on the, nothing on all of the sides. We have seen the Z Blaze 4 recently. We looked at the self uh, photo capability on the uh, Thor S, and we are now looking at the Z Blaze Thor Pro. And what makes it Pro? Well, besides being Thor, well, Thor is a pro to begin with. Is the size of the screen? This is the biggest we've ever seen in a watch it's himungo it's gargantuous it's large let's unpack it revealing the tpu band mm-hmm non-removable but good solid uh sturdy band and wow the watch itself it's so big they have to put numbers around to keep straight where you are look at that Whoa, okay, 130, 30, 60. That means zero is probably up there, 180. These are like compass style uh, directions. Man, you see a couple of little bubbles under there? That's probably because they've got a uh, protector on top of it. And those, oh, I know you don't want to see me do this, but I do. I really, I have so much better results when I work specifically with the glass on these watches. I have never scratched one yet. Um, I mean, there's Gorilla Glass on most of them. So a little plastic screen protector. Nah, you know, they get the bubbles. They're harder to move. Take it off. That's, that's what I do. Anyway, we're going to come back and look at this. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to tell you about this. The Thor Pro comes to us just like the Thor S and the Thor 4 from Banggood. No matter which one you want, Banggood has got it, and we've got the link in the show notes and a discount coupon when they're available so you can pick it up. Check it out. Picking it up from our link through Banggood is helping everybody. Those guys, us, you, and our technical staff, too. We, uh, you know, always looking at ways to help support these watches. Uh, mm, that's a good a good way to um, Thor Pro Bluetooth 4.0 all of the goodies about it. Now here's an interesting thing: the screen is 320 by 320, yet the diameter of it is 1.53 inches. That's a bigger screen diameter, but a smaller screen number than the typical um, 400 by 400 screen AMOLED uh, watches we've looked at. So it's going to be interesting to see and compare how the big screen with the smaller um, pixels um, compares. The good thing about that is generally if you have smaller number of pixels and stuff, it might be better on your overall battery. But it's a bigger screen, so that might eat more battery. So there's another question. What's the battery like? It's a full 1 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, which for me is the sweet spot. You don't really need 2 gigabytes of RAM for anything on a watch. And anything less than 16 is like, well, you can kind of get by with 8, but definitely not 4. So having a 16 gigabyte onboard memory is great. Unfortunately, it's a small 2 megapixel camera. Um, the newer uh, Z Blaze watches, the Thor, I believe, S and 4 have a 5 megapixel. So perhaps we'll see an upgrade. However, with the small screen resolution, that may be all we need in a camera for this one. Yeah, yeah, I know the pictures after you take them are going to be a little more grainy or fuzzy than if it was a higher quality camera. But this is what we got. And it comes with a 500 milliamp hour battery and running Android 5.1, not yet 6 or 7. Uh, 7 is what's on the Android uh, Thor, uh, the Z Blaze Thor 4. Um, it does do the SIM card thing and that would work in 3G not the 4G. So a lot of this, uh, in this watch, are the features that we've come to see in the standard Android 5.1 class of watch. It's just got a big diameter screen. Yeah. Okay. This is another page I brought that kind of repeats what we've seen there, but for those who are easier on reading it than looking at columns and stuff, I won't spend long, but I'll page through this. 
The 3G shows 850 and 2100. I know 850 works in the US, 2100 of course is China, and every, every place else that if you've been able to get it before. Um, there's some more of the specs, pretty much the same thing. Okay, let's uh, finish unboxing and say, let's plug it in and charge it. Where's the charger? What kind of charger? Yeah, it's all in this little compartment thing here. Oh, we have a dock with this one. Okay, dock. Yep. Z-Blaze has done that on their earlier one, like the Blitz. If you remember the Blitz, it had this docking kind of mechanism. And they're back to that now. Before we begin, we have a button, a button, and a camera. The charging port. Really big round glass area for the heart rate. This is where your SIM goes. And can you believe those screws? Wow! <laughs> I guess they don't want you to lose them, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. I get such joy out of all of this because you, you, you find different things you don't expect. I did not expect those screws. Um, let's slap the dock on. Probably not magnetic. Oh, look, it's got a cover for the camera, so no sneaking selfies at night. Uh-uh, not while it's charging. You've got the little port here that you're going to plug in your micro USB to. And just to confirm what we've got here. Okay, looks pretty much standard. Sometimes they're elongated and you have to use that special one. But it looks like that's probably just a basic standard. Plug it in. Pull it on and off, and that's how you charge and connect it to your computer to transfer over files and whatnot. You've got a screwdriver, thank goodness. I don't believe it. Look at those screws. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Those screws are probably not for that. Oh, I guess they are. I was going to say it's for the thing in the bottom, but no. Well... They probably threw a bag of screwdriver and screws in the box just to be generous. Because that, is that screwdriver even big enough? Is it Phillips? It might work. Yeah, I think it'll work. It, all right, all right, I'll move on. I know, I know, you don't have all day. Manual. Welcome to Contents. I'm going to page through it just so you guys can... Um, Take note and come back if you need to. The QR code is going to bring in YWatch. Now they're up to YWatch 2. So I'm not sure if this is going to be the original or the 2 or if the 2 will work. All that stuff will have to be checked out. Here's some more uh, basic. Will it work like that? Yeah, you guys can read it like that. We'll get through it faster that way then. So once again, while you're looking at the manual, I'll fill your head with, with candy canes of the Z-Blaze line. They started with the Blitz, if you remember that, a while back. And that thing was, uh, it still is, uh, one of the best waterproof watches out there with the side camera. You could take pictures underwater, all kinds of stuff, as if you could get the buttons to work. Um, then they came out with the original Thor, which was a nice watch. Very nice. And now we see the Thor 4, which is a bigger format, but good size memory. And then... Uh, Thor Pro, that's this one, the Thor Pro, and then the Thor 4, of course, which is a whole new technology of having uh, 4G LTE communications uh, in it, as well as Android 7 and a bunch of other good stuff. So these are the icons you see. Here's the whole fitness area, heart rate. Look at that, Bluetooth calling capability. Now, this is something new that we've been waiting for on these Android watches. Definitely going to check that one out. That'll be nice. Ah, what's that? Not supported third-party app playback. Okay, there's... Wow, they're showing you what the screens look like for the Bluetooth calling. Huh. They're very proud of that. That's good. That's good. For those of you who don't remember, uh, Bluetooth calling is where you tether your watch to your phone and you, you kind of rely on the SIM card in your phone to make uh, and receive phone calls. That's what's going on uh, with tethering. Uh, standalone is where you put a SIM card directly in the watch. Um, 
and now we're into another language, aren't we? And, and uh, that works differently. This has, of course, the slot for it. All Android watches do the standalone thing. Having the Bluetooth calling tethered to your phone is a whole new thing. Okay, time to take a little break, charge it up, and then we'll be back to look at it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow is all I can say. This watch, wait till you see this watch. The Z Blaze Thor Pro booting up. And you see some words on the screen? I'm going to talk about this because the watch face, listen to that. Isn't that sweet? The watch face that's about to appear comes from the Round Android Watches Watch Face Developer Crew, available just by going to tinyurl.com. You can read it. There's one for square watches too, but this is a round watch. And this face, this face I just found on there, the creator had put it together and it looks like this and it is so perfect for this watch. Let me brighten it up a little bit. Let's go to high and look at this. Now, what's cool about this watch, oh, it's telling me as it's booting up Bluetooth's not on, and I got to turn on notifications uh, for the Bluetooth calling uh, directly from the phone. All that feature is in this watch, but we're looking at the watch face right now. This watch face in particular is a 24-hour clock. See, it's just a little bit about afternoon, and uh, the hour hand is a little after the, tw uh, the 12, and will stay that way all the way till midnight. Warlock Weary created this over here on the uh, Round Android Watches forum, and he and I had a little bit of a dialogue back and forth where he had the original one with that little red mark on it and such, and uh, I was asking him if he could make it a full 24-hour watch, which he has done, and we're featuring it in this video right now. And doggone, if he didn't go out and outdo himself, watch this, if I press and hold and go over to another version that he has up here, if you can see the subtlety in the background, it's like a checkered pattern in black and gray with the gold outline. What is so cool, thank, thank you by the way, thank you so much, Warlock, these are awesome. Um, head on over to the smartwatch, um, Round and round Android watches, right? Tinyurl.com, round Android watches, and you can see all this and more. Now, what's really fun is if you saw the review on the uh, Thor 4, right? This is the Thor Pro. You found out that the server now has available all of the soccer uh, watch faces. And sure enough, from that same server on this watch, we can download them. And if my thumb will behave... I want to get you to something that's like really full screen so you can see edge to edge. Now, not only is this watch super huge, it's got full edge to edge. And I mean, look at it. It's really, I mean, really nice. This is, I never knew what I was missing till I tasted you. Okay. What does it do? A simple overview. You, wow, it's big. You've got uh, all of the things we've had before. This button says screen on vibrator, and this one says silence. I'm pretty sure that's just volume control. Um, that's your twisty wrist to see the time, airplane mode, cellular data. This is a 3G watch now, not 4G. This is your uh, location services for GPS. You can change the brightness of the screen, and in the low, it's like really low, really nice night mode. Medium is... Like so, kind of on the dim side indoors, but it works. And high is like that, nice and bright. Bluetooth and, of course, um, what you call Wi-Fi, right? And that's all happening here. And then you have your pedometer stuff, your step count and whatnot on this level. When you go to the left, by swiping to the right, you get into notifications. If you have any, come over here, you get your app drawer. Come over here, you get your music player for onboard music. Wow, let me tell you about sound. This thing has got a nice boomy speaker in it. It's playing really nicely. I really like the sound coming out of it. Um, we're back over here. And if I swipe up, I'm gonna get into the weather in my area. 
and you see it's in the centigrade. It doesn't have Fahrenheit. The newer um, Android 7 ones, we saw the, uh, the Thor 4 has both centigrade and Fahrenheit, but this has still got the old weather. That might be updatable by firmware. We'll have to see in the future, but it's certainly changing for those of you who like the F word uh, in the world of the new watches. But it, uh, it works and it's uh, downloading the information from my area. So that's the layout of the watch. You have two buttons on the side. This one's an on off button and takes you back to the main thing. And this is just a back button when you're deep into stuff, which we're about to get into. Contacts, phones is related to your SIM card activity. If you put a SIM card in here with its own phone number on it, you'll have your contacts and phone uh, information and be able to phone out from that SIM card. You go in here, you get a dial thingy, and you place the call and it's going to come back and tell you that there's no sim card because i don't have one in here to test yet we're going to do all that in the more advanced stuff this is a kind of out of the box what does it come with by the way i'm hoping to do the more advanced review where we test out the phones and we do all of the benchmarking and everything as a, as a joint video with the pro with the four um with the thor s and maybe even the basic Thor. So you get a good feel between all of them as how they compare as well as the advanced features. So have a little patience with me. I'm going to put that thing together and we'll consolidate a bunch of uh, individual videos. I know, I know, you see it too. Bluetooth call. You're right. You get in here, you got a dial pad, you can place a call. Now, when you're tethered to your phone, and we'll demo this later, you'll be able to tap in the number hit the phone uh, call thing. This looks like it's a recall the last number, I believe. And then this is a place a new call. And if we have a number in here and we place it, it says no device connected, right? So we have to be tethered and I'm not. But if I were, this will be an outgoing calling feature that will activate the call out on your phone. You have to have your phone with you and within tethering range. And you'll have dialogue through the watch, you'll be able to talk and hear through the watch, the phone call. Really nice. That's, we've been waiting for that a long, long time. The call history, when you hit synchronize, will bring over all your past calls, relatively all of them, from your phone. So you have the call history of who's called you, who you've called and whatnot. You'll have your phone book from your phone here on the watch. And you have this overall settings that you can set things up um, and scan uh, for the information from your phone. All this is brand new in Bluetooth calling. Messaging ties back to phone and contacts. Those three are all for SIM. I know it's confusing. It's not bundled all in one, but it's there. It's there. And if you're not going to put a SIM card in it, you're only going to need to use the Bluetooth calling. Settings is our general area. Now, here's what's... I got to tell you, there's... I got to tell you a little bit about phone aesthetics and sweet spots, okay? This is personal for my personal opinion, and yours may be different, but um, I really like big words. I like big letters. I like to be able to read everything, and on this watch, I got two things going for me. One, the, the watch is really big in diameter, and uh, two, it's only only I say 320 by 320 pixels. Now, are you seeing any pixelations? Are you seeing dots in the words? Are you seeing little, can you, can you tell individual pixels? Well, I can't. Uh, maybe you can. If you can, then maybe you need a 400 by 400 screen. But what I've found, when you have a screen that's 320 by 320, all of the writing is, is readable. It's nice and big. Look at that. And if you compare this with a lot of the ones we've reviewed that are uh, 400 by 400, you're going to see that um, the writing in many cases is really small. Here's all the different um, sound settings. You have ringtones and watch uh, notification sounds. And just to give you an idea, <clears throat> he says, oh, well, the notifications isn't turned up, so it's not going to work. Okay, I need to turn all that on. There, sorry. Okay, uh, this is not a really good 
way of showing you what the sounds are. We're going to do that by playing some music later. Um, but you can play with all the sounds and set them from there. Anyway, the big display makes all the difference in the world for me. The arc, the list, and the matrix. Those are the three different display types. We've been looking at the arc. Here's the list. It's going to be straight up and down like that when you're back here. Okay, like that, instead of the arc. Uh, but personally, I really like the arc. And you've noticed how smooth this is as you're going through it. We are in display. And I wanted to show you... Well, we No, no, it's after display that we're in the app listing style, which is actually part of display, but they didn't put it there. This is the four by kind of thing. So if you're more comfortable in seeing the icons and working with them that way, icon driven, uh, this is a good way to go. You memorize your icons and out in the bright sun, uh, when you're looking and you can tell what the icons are, it makes it actually easier to work with that way. And settings, oops, settings. Okay, there, and I'm going to go back to the arc because that's just really sweet. And when you're in the arc, even though this has got really big words, they're readable in this 320 by 320. They're not scrolling completely off. Really nice. Okay, more stuff in settings. And the display, the app list, the connection. This is where we set up our... Um, our Bluetooth connection right here, you turn it on and blah, blah, blah. All done that. Your overall Wi-Fi, which is where you connect your particular uh, server or uh, router. You can run this as a Wi-Fi hotspot if your data service plan will provide for it. So if you have SIM card, 3G, going on 3G data, you can turn that on. Take the watch with you and uh, power up your tablet or something. Then you can go into airplane mode, set your GPS, and restrict applications. Very familiar, right? That's because this is Android 5.1. You can see the time when you twist your arm, and you see the watch face you've selected. None of that digital thing in the middle that was last year. You get your actual watch face. And you can do pedometer uh, services as well. There's a whole power savings area, and it's showing you what you're using. And always, 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 your screen is the biggest culprit. So try to keep it on medium and not high, if at all possible, or low. Or you can put in that app. I always talk about display brightness, and then you have a little slider on the side that you can adjust exactly where you want. Language and input lets us select any of these languages that the watch currently is supporting. And it's nice to see them big enough to read, isn't it? Okay. And keyboards, you can install other ones. And you have voice input and text-to-speech output. And uh, you've got Pico TTS, which is kind of the standard one. But I believe you can install the Google uh, engine as well. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. You hearing that? Nice, good tone. It's got good body to it. The whole watch is that way. So phone calls, music, it's got good flavor. Uh, let's see. Language. Okay. Date and time is basic. Uh, you set it off of uh, once you connect to the Internet, it sets automatically. You can set your time zone. You can make it a.m. and p.m. You can reset the whole watch. Uninstall any apps that you've put in. Are there anything listed in here? Yeah, Google Play Music I've installed and Google Play Services. Uh, which needed to be updated, and you're going to want to do that too. Uh, it wouldn't even play Google Play Music until I updated the services, and it's always good to update the services. And then the About the Watch, which is where you find out what the model number is, the Android version, and what we're looking typically for is this kernel version, and look how readable it is. Later, we'll show you that side-by-side -side on, say, the Thor 4, and uh, it's going to be really, really tiny print, really tiny. Now, m many of you, that's fine. But, you know, when I've got a watch on, I want to glance on it. I want to be able to read it. I don't want to have to squint it. Anyway, just a personal thing. 320 by 320 is my sweet spot for a screen, just like RAM. You know, there's 512 mega, whatever megabytes. There's one gigabyte. There's two gigabytes. 
one gigabyte is like the sweet spot. You don't really need two in a watch. One is great. That's what's in here. So there's certain things that just are not too much, not too little. And for me, the screen size and the RAM are two of those. Ah, <sighs> that was all in settings. To, and we finished it with the about. So you got a basic browser and calendar and clock. Clock is where you set your alarms, not set your clock. You got the camera on the side. Wow, I don't know. I'll just turn it on. And Oh, you like this? This is my uh, snack pack. I had to uh, raise the platform a little bit in order to uh, <laughs> get the camera to work, uh, or to the, the, the distance from the, the floor to the, the watch to be just right. So I had to pump it up a little bit. And I did that by putting on this little snack pack. And nothing beats just using what you've got right here to run off a little video and take a little picture. And we'll check those out. <laughs> Here's the video. Not really loud, but you can hear it. We're going to look in more detail at all of this stuff. We can double tap to make it bigger. Double tap again to make it even bigger and double tap to go back, but we don't have pinch and zoom. We can't do that. And when we go into details, this is its default 1200 by 1600. File size is tiny. Um, it's supposedly a 2 megapixel camera as opposed to 5 megapixels. So when you multiply all that out, you can see what you've got. It's basically fun little pictures, but you're really not going to blow them up to poster size. Okay, that's the camera. And then you've got the gallery, which is where you'd see those pictures. The onboard music, if you have any. The sound recorder, which is usually just basic. And it allows you to do a recording. This one does not have any kind of a moving needle or anything um, to tell what's going on. Uh, but it does say that it's recording. When you say done and save and play it, Now, you may have to crank your volume up to hear that because I'm loud naturally and um, this is soft, but it's easily hearable to me from arm distance away. And what's nice is it's not tinny. It actually <clears throat> kind of sounds like me, well, what I'm used to hearing me. I know, I know, I hear me too much already. File Manager, we have available 10 gigabytes after I've loaded this with a whole bunch of watch faces, a whole bunch of apps that I'm going to be installing. It's 16 gigabytes, folks, after you subtract some for the operating system and whatnot, you still have quite a bit of space in there. We've got um, weather, which is where, you know, you actually get your local weather. And you've got voice search, which once you set up your Google account, works great. Um, you can just ask whatever you want to, and it'll come back to you. It's like the OK uh, trigger word, you know, that Google has for you. Then you got your regular Play Store, which you want to go into and update your apps and whatnot. Then you've got the, uh, your typical Google Maps. You've got this thing, which is Connect Phone, which is where you get your QR code to scan in for the Y Watch. And I believe it's going to work with Y Watch 2. Um, anyway, we'll give that whole thing a try. Tells you how you go through getting it all tethered up and whatnot. And now you're into what I installed, the Google Play Music. For our friends in India, Bollywood Mesmerizing Songs Playlist. Good time to demonstrate this, too. I can press here. Oh, what am I into? Notifications. Here we go. Okay, I can press and hold. I can change from full to small, get back into this by going into my recent tasks and hitting play music, and there we go. There's my music player in a tiny square. And I can pause it. It was vibrating when I did all that too. Or I can play it. And I'm going to take it off of this little uh, casing that I got in. This, by the way, does not come with it. It came with a different watch, but I love it so much, I've decided to use it as my little display station. Got the speakers somewhere here. It, nice and loud wherever they are. Where are they? Are they up in the top? 
I think it's coming right out of here. You see that? And let me play a section, but hopefully not enough for Google to get upset with me. Can you hear that? It's, uh, it's really nice. It's amazing. Mrs. Tix was blown away last night when I started playing it. And she said, wow, what's that? I said, it's a watch. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a watch. And it plays out really, really nice. So that is, and of course I can back button here. That was the play music. Now the next section, um, health. I put the uh, watch on because the first thing is heart rate. And of course you need to have it on if you're gonna test the heart rate. When you go enter, it immediately begins checking. Once again, the technology is called PPG. There are little green diodes on the back of the watch. It shines a light inside your arm and the reflected light from the blood moving through your capillaries will slightly change that light. And as it does, the watch can interpret the time between the changes in the light, calculate that out and give you what it considers to be your pulse or heart rate. And it's doing that. It registered a number on that date and time, and it's a continuous read right now, giving us our heart rate information. Back button down here. I can go into pedometer. Here's my step so far today in general, but with this one, I can go into a timed walk or run. By hitting that, I get a stopwatch against my actual steps. So you can, you know, try to get 10,000 steps in an hour or whatever you want to do. Set your, uh, your goals on there. And that is the health section. And the last part has to do with being tethered to your phone. Remember up above, we saw the stuff about Bluetooth calling and you had um, the ability to get your contacts and your call logs and uh, a dial pad. Well, this is all Bluetooth also, but this is Bluetooth tethering to that WII, Yware, Watt uh, app where you have remote capture to take a picture from your phone by using a remote button on here, music control to play music on your phone, not the music that's installed here, and then find your device. So if you're separated, you touch that and it'll make a loud sound come out of your phone. Finally, switching platform, whether you have an Android phone or an iOS Apple phone, uh, you select which one you want and it'll optimize that tethering uh, for you. Okay. Have we covered everything we wanted to talk about? Again, a lot of this stuff will go into more detail when we do the combined side-by-side -side look at these things. But that's pretty much it. Bluetooth calling, we have to tether for that. And that's all of the apps. Now I'm in this uh, notifications and see it's showing me that if I want to play more, oh, I can do a thumbs up. Previous, really? I can go to a previous song. Interesting. Okay, maybe that launches it again. Anyway, a lot to learn about this one, but it is a fabulous, fabulous watch with a tremendous number of um, apps that, or uh, watch faces that you can put into it. Uh, again, the all the new World Cup watch faces are downloadable from that server. And by the server, what I mean is you go all the way to the end of all of the ones you've got installed and hit that plus button. As long as you're on Wi-Fi or on the network, it's going to come up with a big list of a whole lot of uh, watch faces that have not been installed. And you just simply pick one, hit the down button. It quickly goes through, loads it up. Then when you leave this, that watch face is now one of them that you can use. And if you see a little uh, minus sign beside any of these, you can delete them simply by touching it and they'll go away. And that's how easy it is to add special watch faces that are available directly online from the downloadable service. You also can add in the custom watch faces from places like these. And that's an easy thing to do too. We have uh, different videos that explain how to do that. And you can just roam through and pick the ones you like and end up with some awesome ones like we showed you at the very beginning. They will load in right before all of these. Right, whoa, there, okay. Uh, come on now, yeah. And uh, again, we can brighten that. Oh, it is high. All right. 
and that's a 24 hour one. It's now 130 almost, 13, uh, 13, 25, 27. Uh, great, great watch faces available, all different kinds. I have so many installed. And this shows you the smoothness of the scrolling too. These are a lot of my personals, my favorites that I've downloaded for a long, long time now that uh, I constantly install in all of my watches. So I have a robust collection of all of these really nice uh, possibilities here. Alrighty, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. You can pick this thing up, of course, from Banggood. Banggood is our supplier pretty much of the whole Thor series. Uh, the Z-Blaze Thor 4, um, Pro, S, and the basic, yeah. Uh, we'll be doing a consolidated, deeper review of all of these compared together soon. Um, if you have any questions or want me to cover certain things, be sure you mention that in the comments down below. And definitely subscribe if you haven't, if you'd like to. We really appreciate your presence here. And we will see you definitely soon, both here and over at the Round Android Watches. Check in over there. I think you'll like it.